This is modern life. We gaze into our personal devices from the comfort of our own homes. Our rectangular windows neatly arranged on our rectangular screens, feeding the illusion that we are in control, that our secrets are contained. We can organise them, modify them, minimise them, even delete them. Or at least, that's what we think. The world has changed, but human nature has not. And that's what I find interesting about the 2014 film Unfriended. It takes timeless ideas about the dark side of humanity, ideas which the horror genre has always been exploring, and brings them into the digital age. Indeed, almost the entire movie plays out on the MacBook screen of its protagonist, Blair Lilly. It's a so-called screen life movie. It wasn't the first. I believe that claim belongs to 2002's The Collingswood Story. But Unfriended did touch a cultural nerve capturing a parent's worst nightmare of what their kids might be exposed to through their devices. In fact, the parents are notably absent throughout the film. We don't see them. They're out. The teens are figuring out how to navigate this rapidly evolving online world for themselves. I'm talking about taking the entire social experience of college and putting it online. What could possibly go wrong? Here's the context of Unfriended. A girl called Laura Barnes got drunk at a party and soiled herself. It was captured on camera and the video was released online. It led to a cascade of cyberbullying, culminating with Laura deciding to end it all. We will now be entering spoiler territory. The film takes place on the anniversary of Laura's death, playing out in real time as Laura's friends hang out on a Skype call. And to their horror, a supernatural manifestation of Laura joins the call to enact judgement on them, one by one. Now, who is this figure? Is it Laura herself from beyond the grave, or is it a demon masquerading as Laura? The film doesn't confirm, but whatever she is, she will stop at nothing to unveil the secrets of these characters. In Unfriended, everyone has shame. Everyone has something to hide. Everyone is trying to cover over their nakedness, figuratively and literally in some cases. And this is deeply reminiscent of an ancient text which has profoundly shaped the culture that produced the film Unfriended. Genesis, from the Hebrew Bible. Adam and Eve were warned by God not to eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, but they are tempted. They go there. They eat from the tree. What follows is an origin story for human shame. We read, The eyes of both of them were opened, and they realised they were naked. So they sewed fig leaves together and made coverings for themselves. Then the man and his wife heard the sound of the Lord God as he was walking in the garden in the cool of the day, and they hid from the Lord God among the trees of the garden. But the Lord God called to the man, Where are you? He answered, I heard you in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked, so I hid. And he said, Who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree that I commanded you not to eat from? Adam and Eve thought that the fruit would bring them fulfilment. Instead, it reveals their nakedness. Their response is sadly comical. They try to hide within the garden of their own creator. They make hasty fig leaf coverings for themselves. They know what they've done, but they can't bear for it to be revealed. And that's exactly what we see in Unfriended, the crippling humiliation of shame, and the lengths to which people will go to cover it up. The recognition of wrongdoing, but the unwillingness to own up to it. Eventually, Laura's ghost says this, Tell me who posted the video, or someone dies. The big twist of the movie is that the dirtiest secret of all belongs to the film's protagonist, Blair. She is the one who recorded the video. The video that precipitated Laura's death. And Blair will stop at nothing to keep that truth hidden, even if it means watching all her friends die, one by one. Unfriended is careful not to place all the blame on one person. Blair's crime is especially egregious, yes, but many others were undoubtedly complicit and taking part in the resulting online feeding frenzy. By some accounts, Laura herself was a bit of a bully at times. None of that justifies what they did to her. But in this film, we see that no one is especially morally upstanding. If Blair had owned up to the truth from the beginning, would her friends' lives have been spared? 
perhaps not. Perhaps Laura's ghost was always intending to punish all of them. But an online forum seems to suggest that things would have been a lot better if only Blair had confessed her sin. At one point she says this to Laura's ghost, We're good people. And therein lies the problem. These friends are living in a fantasy. Blair especially has buried the truth so deep that she has deceived her friends, she has deceived us, the audience, we're rooting for her for most of the movie, and she's even deceived herself, it seems. At the start of the movie, she's at peace, even though it's the anniversary of Laura's death. Either she can't join the dots between that horrible video she recorded and Laura's tragic death, or she's choosing not to. She's choosing to suppress the truth. And this is what humans are like. You see, this video isn't about pointing fingers at these teenagers and saying, look how awful they are. No, these tendencies are universal. There is a sickness in this world, and there is a degree to which all of us, myself included, are complicit. Let me draw your attention to a part of the Genesis text we looked at earlier. The eyes of both of them, Adam and Eve that is, were opened, and they realised they were naked. This is what it's like to be confronted with the truth about sin. The fantasy is shattered, and our eyes are open to see what's really going on. There's another effective moment in Unfriended that taps into this, this idea of eyes being opened. And it happens just before the death of Ken, the mysterious avatar which joined the Skype call, Laura's ghost. It switches to a strange image. It's the video feed from a camera which is apparently hidden in Ken's bedroom. Ken removes the obstructions, looks into the camera, and freezes. And this is where the screen life format of Unfriended really comes into its own. We don't see what Ken sees, we just see his reaction. Same goes for all his friends on the call. They don't see what he sees, they just see his reaction. Whatever it is, Ken is clearly terrified. He is being confronted with a terrible truth, probably something to do with his own involvement in Laura's death. It's a moment of crushing realisation. You see, in the run-up to enacting judgement on Ken, Laura's ghost wants his eyes to be opened, and she wants his friends to see that happen. A foretaste of the fate that awaits all of them. Here's another aspect of the Genesis story which we see played out in Unfriended. The conversation that God has with Adam and Eve after discovering them hiding in the garden. The man said, The woman you put here with me, she gave me some fruit from the tree, and I ate it. Then the Lord God said to the woman, What is this you have done? The woman said, The serpent deceived me, and I ate. Notice the blame shifting. Adam blames Eve, and Eve blames the serpent. They're quick to pass on the blame, and unwilling to accept any themselves. The truth is that all three are to blame, but they want to keep the cover-up going as long as possible. And this is what humans are like. During Unfriended, Laura's ghost uses the game Never Have I Ever to reveal a number of dark truths about this friendship group. It's an agonising experience for all, but one character decides to embrace the spirit of the game and use it as an opportunity to throw stones at the others. His name, appropriately, is Adam. Someone has an answer! Hello? What are you I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Mitch. Me. Oh, okay, new question. It's a bleak film. In many ways, much of its horror resides in what's bubbling beneath the surface of this friendship group. The backstabbing, the lies, the blame shifting. So what happens? Where does the film take this? Well, the truth catches up. If Blair won't reveal it, Laura's ghost will. And the film ends with Blair watching in horror as the online world discovers the terrible truth and turns against her. I actually think it might have been more powerful to end the film there, to end it with Blair being confronted with the terrible reality of her sin. But the film goes for a final jump scare, showing Laura's ghost kill Blair and lunge at the camera. I guess it gives the film a completeness. 
the judgment has been enacted. The film illustrates the devastating and contagious nature of sin, the ways it spreads into every aspect of human life, and attempts to cover it up make the situation even worse. In this film there is no sign of grace or forgiveness, just judgement. What's interesting about the original Adam and Eve story is that after God exposes their sin and explains the consequences, he does something very surprising. The Lord God made garments of skin for Adam and his wife and clothed them. God covers their nakedness. He removes their inadequate fig leaf coverings and he clothes them with animal skins. It's incredibly gracious, but it's also costly. Presumably an animal was killed to provide the skins, blood was shed to cover the shame of Adam and Eve. And interestingly, Christians believe that this points to Jesus. God the Son came as the second Adam and he gave his life on the cross, taking the full force of the judgement that we deserve, and that's very different. I actually found Unfriended to be a powerful film, and it left me with a yearning for forgiveness. It's the only way that this vicious circle of shame and blame can be broken. In 2018, a sequel was released, Unfriended Dark Web, featuring brand new characters caught in a different online catastrophe. I might do a video about that at some point. Hello, Thomas here. You might enjoy a short film I directed called The Telltale Heart. It's based on the Edgar Allan Poe short story of the same name, and we had a lot of fun with it. Loads of practical effects and unhinged performances. And you can watch it by clicking here. I'd love to hear your thoughts. On this channel, I try to look at film from a different perspective, and sometimes I have a go at making films myself. Thank you so much for watching. Do subscribe if you'd like to stay in the loop, and I will be back soon. Goodbye.